every NBA season, there are a set of players, at least one, that really takes what he showed the season prior, adds to it in the offseason, and really has what we can call a breakout season. We're going to talk about players today that I think are primed to have a breakout season in the 2023-24 season. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis, NBA Central. What's going on, basketball fans? Welcome to another episode of NBA Central, your number one spot for everything basketball related. I'm one of the hosts here, Hayes. You guys can follow the channel right off the top at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And I'm going to talk to you guys about players that I feel could be in line for a breakout season in the 2023-24 season. Now, this could be because of a multitude of reasons. This could be because of a huge trade coming via the team, a shift in the organization overall. It could be a lot of those things, or a player that's just ready to step up and take what they did last season and just take it to new heights. The first one I'm going to talk about, though, is going to get a more opportunity because of a pending trade that we expect to go down from their current franchise player, and that's the Portland Trailblazers and Dame Lillard. We expect Dame to kind of move on sooner rather than later, and the player that I'm going to talk about in, in Shaden Sharp could benefit extremely well from that. When you look at Shaden Sharp, his averages of last season are solid. Nine, basically 10 points per game, three rebounds, one uh, assist, 47% overall shooting from the field. Shaden Sharp, only 20 years old and just turned 20 this past May. He started 15 games for the Portland Trail Blazers last season, and in those 14 games that he played, he averaged 18.5 points per game on 44% shooting from uh, the field and 36% shooting from three-point range. When you factor in also five rebounds, three assists per game, Shaden Sharp as a starter Flash just about everything that you wanted to see from a player of his archetype, his build, and the overall potential level from him. And considering that him, Anthony Simons, Scoot Henderson could all benefit from, uh, you know, what well, benefit as far as getting more shots from Dame Lillard being traded and moved on as ex expected to come at some point in time, Shaden Sharp is going to step in, probably be that starting uh, small forward for that team. And yeah, you still have a player like Jeremy Grant who's going to get a lot of shots as well and want to get some shots up. But I think that Shaden Sharp, with the year added, uh, offseason added to his game, is primed to really take his game to the next level and really step up and show out in a major way. I think that Shaden Sharp, uh, it, when it's all said and done, could even be better and higher on that priority list than e even Anthony Simons is right now currently for the Portland Trailblazers. And I think you know there's a reason why the Portland Trailblazers had to really evaluate where that team set and looked at the young talent that they had and figured – hey, it's probably better that we do move, Dane. And I think the Shaden Sharp is a big part of that. And I think he's going to really have that type of season where he goes from a player that a lot of people see promising to a player to start looking at and saying, hey, this guy can be one of the better scorers in the league when you look at just how fluid he is. Can he develop into a more true three-level scorer as well? He's going to have to improve that dribbling a little bit in that and creating separation. But I like Shaden Sharp a lot, and I think he's a player that absolutely is primed going into next season to really take what he's already done, take the, little, the promise that we've seen in him already, and take it to new heights and really, you know, establish himself as a cornerstone of that franchise going forward, especially in a rebuild scenario. The next player I'm going to talk about is Mark Williams with the Charlotte Hornets. And you look at it, the fact is it's just this. When you look at Mark Williams, he came into the, to the league and we understood that he was going to be able to rebound, block shots, but he had that offensive upside that really was going to depend on who the coach was, the team that he went to, and everything else like that. When you look at Mark Williams and his, his averages last season, 63% shooting from the field, which is what you want to see from a big man that operates primarily just around the basket, nine points per game, seven rebounds per game, and he and he did that all with, with only starting 17 games, only playing 19 minutes overall did Mark Williams do last year. And when you look at the upside there that he has, I think Mark Williams is also a player that understands how to go out and get his points. He understands his own limitations as a player. But when you look at him as a starter last year, started 17 games, 26 minutes in those games, he averaged 11.6 points per game, 9.8 rebounds, a block per game. And so that was in 29 minutes, shooting the ball 62% from the field overall. Mark Williams, to me, is a it could be a, a kind of new modern-day big man in the sense, not a big man that's a threat to stretch the floor, but a big man that can guard multiple positions, rebound, block shots well, and it is mobile enough that it, it adds flexibility for how you build out the rest of your team. And then when you look at the Charlotte Hornets and what they uh, are, are going to kind of be, as long as LaMelo Ball is healthy, 
You still have you have Brandon Miller who's coming into that team. We don't know what's going on with P.J. Washington. Miles Bridges is coming back. But Mark Williams' offense isn't going to be – he's not going to have to be re- heavily relied on for his offense. And I think that's a situation that he can thrive in personally. And I really like Mark Williams. I think he's also a breakout candidate in 2023-24. Next player that I'm going to talk about is Nikola Jovic from the Miami Heat. Now, this is a guy who was was – was pretty raw, and he's still going to be be pretty raw. He didn't play a lot for the Miami Heat at all last season. And when you look at the Miami Heat, they are a, a team that they need production from the power forward position. But where I'm going to actually go with this is different. Nikola Jovic, if the Miami Heat do end up trading for Dame Lillard, is probably going to be one of the players that is included in that deal, right? And so because of that, I think he's going to go to a scenario that's not going to be a lot asked for him, and he's going to have – a role where he's able to to learn, go through his mistakes, go through his progressions, and he's going to develop a little bit quicker. He's going to accelerate his development a little bit. His averages last season, nothing to sing home about or write home about. 5.5 points per game, two rebounds per game on 40% shooting from the field and a putrid 22% shooting from three-point range. But when you look at Nikola Jovic, he is a player that has the the new kind of modern-day forward game that you're looking for. He is that new modern-day power forward. And He just has to refine those skills. Still extremely raw. Do not want to overlook that at all because he is a very raw player. And even though he started eight games last season, those eight starts really don't, it doesn't point. 21 minutes in those eight games, 39% shooting from the field, 22% from three-point range, eight points per game, three and a half rebounds, one assist. But I just look at the game and, and the potential that he came up with. The fact that he's already added to his body, he's added some muscle, he's bigger, he still has a super high ceiling, and I do think that his development, whether he stays with the Miami Heat or is eventually included in that trade to the to the uh, Portland Trailblazers, if it does go down, I think Nikola Jovic is in a prime position to really benefit from a lot of that as well, and I really like Nikola Jovic. I think he's going to be a player that you know really rounds out his game. Next up, Mojan Beauchamp. Now, this is a guy who has the scoring potential. Yes, he scored the 83 points or whatever, but that's not why he's on this list. He's on this list because if the Milwaukee Bucks do end up moving from a Pat Connaughton or Grayson Allen, like it's been rumored that they're shopping those players, Mojan Beauchamp is going to be a player that's immediately kind of thrust maybe, maybe into getting those minutes. Now, again, he's another one of those players that the stats don't really wow you, right? Five points per game, 2.2 rebounds, 39% shooting overall from the field. Now, he only played 13 minutes per game. He did start 11 minutes per game. I'm sorry, he did start 11 games last season for the Milwaukee Bucks. And as a starter there, not really much change. 8.3 points per game, 36% shooting, 34% from three-point range. But when you look for, and also four and a half rebounds, which is, is nice for him. But when you look at the modern-day swing man, what he can be as a complimentary piece, especially if that three-point shooting comes around a little bit more and is more consistent. I like Mojan Bochamp as a player that can also really excel and take his, his stock to a new level in the in the, in that in next season, 2023-24. And then lastly, Obi Toppin. I gotta have Obi Toppin on this list. He is going to a team that's full of young dogs that's a scrappy team that's going to be fighting for playoff position this year that yeah once uh, Halliburton went down it really changed a lot of that team but that team was on trajectory to make a play-in tournament when you look at it a high flyer six foot nine 220 pounds get out in transition he's going to be uh joining Ben Matherin Tyrese Halliburton that team has dogs overall in that team and I think Obi Toppin's going to be able to come in uh 45 percent shooting from the field overall from his career I think that he's going to be a player that, with a true point guard, is going to be able to up his game some. And the fact that he's not shy at all from shooting or trying to score, I think that Obi Toppin also could be a breakout player in the 2023-24 season. Let me know what you guys think down below. Who are some players that you think could absolutely break out next season? Sound off on that down below. Do you think I'm tripping on any of these players? Do you agree on any of them? Let me know. Otherwise, make sure you guys are following the channel at NBA Central. Uh, at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the episodes, you can do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything basketball-related, and we'll see you guys the next time I feel like making a video. Prior to tomorrow. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.